we would like to present to you some artifacts coming from the Terramara of Pragato, an Italian Bronze Age site located in the Po Plain. Although the site has already been uncovered in the 1880s, it has only recently been depth investigated. The settlement has been dated between the Middle Bronze Age II and the early stages of the recent Bronze Age. It has been partially identified through the discovery of the basal traces of the Palisade and the wooden gabions. The latter originally contained the embankment surrounded by the ditch, a common feature of all the Terramara villages. Among the numerous objects found, our attention focused on a specific class of the rental tools. These archaeological tools show some morphological differences. More specifically, in two cases the active parts are large and flat, like in number 296 and number 169. In two other cases, the active areas have converging sides with semicircular distal parts. The number 1810 is very unique, because it has two active parts. The larger one has a concave distal part, the smallest one has a more rounded profile. The number 1482 is broken, but we think that these tools probably had a biforked active area. In some cases, the rose is still present on the proximal part. In the other cases, this part is absent. The abundance of these tools testifies their widespread use in different Bronze Age sites in Italy, and especially within the Terramara culture, suggesting the existence of a semi-specialized craft activity aimed at their production. These sharp-edged instruments are traditionally considered as handled hose related to agricultural purposes, like tillage. Nevertheless, we are convinced that a different function should not be completely excluded. In fact, the result of recent trace analysis on similar instruments of the Vincian Neolithic culture in the Balkans have suggested their possible use in woodworking. In order to corroborate this hypothesis, we find it interesting to compare our archaeological samples to the sharp edge tools used by the members of the Papuan population of the Korowai to excavate the sago palms and extract their starch. Even though the raw materials are different, their morphology is quite similar. The aim of this experiment is therefore to provide an alternative interpretation of the function of these artifacts, or even to suggest a double function for some of them. This difference in uses could be directly related to the morphology of the instrument itself. Five different types of d rantwell tools have been experimentally reproduced considering the archaeological finds. Number 1 and 2 with flat cutting edges. Number 3 with a 4 cutting edge. Number 4 with a cutting edge with converging sides. And number 5 with two active parts. We consider it essential to use a bronze toolkit the correct reproduction of the instruments in order to create their technological traces similar to the archaeological ones, and to understand the possible chain operatoire adopted by the ancient craftsmen. No axes have been found at Pragato, so we decided to reproduce an axe with a typological reference of one attested at the nearby Terramar of Catinalbo. The bronze axe was experimentally made with an alloy of copper and tin at 9%. Bronze chisels were also produced. The extraction of each support from the antler took about half an hour. The axe has been used to reproduce the active edges. It has also been used to remove the cortical tissue in some areas, as for the hole for handling. This was made in an hour using the chisel to create the rectangular shape and to remove the internal spongy tissue. To smooth and sharpen the cutting edges of some experimental tools, we use sand and water on sandstone abraders for an hour. The latter have been selected taking into account the main characteristics of those found at Pragato that show user traces related to this activity. All the finished replicas were therefore hafted with handles of different lengths to evaluate every potential way of using them. Most of the tools were used as holes. 
They show great performance in tillage, creating furrows and holes, removal of weeds and smooth pebbles in the soil. Tool number two, with the widest cutting edge, was used only for this task, demonstrating an excellent efficiency. The length of the handle certainly determines the posture of the experimenter. It can be assumed that longer handle tools are connected to long-term agricultural activities. The shorter handle tools, instead, may have been related to more specific gardening activities. Furthermore, the lateral surface of the largest instrument, number 5, which has a second active part, seems to be functional for compacting and leveling the soil. The second hypothesis was to test some of these tools as woodworking axes. The tools number 1 and number 4 have shown incredible efficiency in different activities. The tools were used on the tough fresh wood of Celtis australis, also commonly called stone breaker. Wood sections were created in less than 3 minutes. The bark was also easily removed. Experiments have also been carried out on dry wood, much harder, on which the instrument number 4, with the cutting edge and the converging sides, has shown better performance. The removal of the roots in the soil can be complementary to the first functional hypothesis. This experimental study is very important to understand the potential uses of these derunter tools. The chain operator adopted to create the experimental replicas has left traces very similar to those found on the archaeological tools. This suggests that our gestures and instruments used for their production could be compatible with the ancient technology. We have observed how some tools are morphologically suitable at agricultural holes, as those with a flatter and wider cutting edges. However, it is likely that tools with the active parts with the converging sides may have been involved in other activities, such as woodworking. This interpretation would be confirmed not only by the outcome of the experiment, but mainly by the trace analysis. In fact, they have shown strong similarities between some of the archaeological and experimental tools. The archaeological instrument number 296 has a deformation on the active edge, comparable to its experimental replica, used only for tillage. The same can be said for the archaeological tool number 636. Hot edge shows fractures very similar to the experimental replica exclusively used on wood. Therefore, if in some cases the morphology can be an indicator of a specific use, in other cases, however, the functional experiments confirm the further hypothesis of their multifunctionality. The active part of the replica of tool number 169 to be efficient both in woodworking and in ploughing the soil. The different functional traces on the archaeological tool validate this interpretation. Some experimental tools were instead ineffective for the function which we had presumed, as for the replica number 3, with the fork cutting edge, for which it could yet be hypothesized another use to verify. Nevertheless, our data confirm that these instruments cannot be directly and exclusively linked to agricultural purposes, as it always has been done. Some of them may also have been involved in craft activities such as carpentry by the members of the community of Pargatto.